Hello, loves. Do you believe in soulmates? Do you believe in love at first sight? How about swiping right? Time to talk about the holiday that singles and some people in relationships love to hate, Valentine's Day. But guess what, haters? Valentine's Day is actually the best day of the year. Why? It's my birthday. Yep, Valentine baby over here. Today, on this bonus episode of Failed Utopia, the utopia of love, some really, really weird stories about St. Valentine and executions, fun and possibly dubious Valentine's Day facts, and some very badly read poetry. So, first thing we need to figure out, who was this St. Valentine guy, and why did he get dead? Yeah, all the St. Valentines were martyrs. There were several different St. Valentines, and nobody's sure which one, if any of them, is actually associated with what we know as Valentine's Day. In one legend, Emperor Claudius II didn't want Roman men to marry during wartime because he thought single men made better soldiers. St. Valentine didn't think that was fair, and went on to perform secret weddings. Of course, he got caught and was imprisoned and executed. In another legend, a completely different St. Valentine got caught ministering to persecuted Christians and trying to help them escape brutal Roman prisons. During his own imprisonment, he fell in love with a girl, and in some versions of the story, That girl was the daughter of his jailer. Before he was executed, he wrote her a letter and signed it, From Your Valentine. In another version of that same story, he didn't fall in love with the jailer's daughter, but he did cure her blindness and convert her and her whole family to Christianity. Valentine also happens to be the patron saint of beekeepers and epilepsy, if that's useful. Anyway, it's all very murky. There are a number of weird legends about the origins of Valentine's Day, and also about how it eventually became associated with romantic love. Around the end of the 5th century, Roman Pope Gelatius officially declared February 14th St. Valentine's Day. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages that it became associated with love and romance. One of the earliest associations seems to be in Chaucer's Parliament of Fowls, written in the 14th century. It has to do with a gathering for birds to choose their mates, and he wrote it in honor of the first anniversary of the engagement of King Richard II of England to Anne of Bohemia. I'm going to read you a version translated into modern English for the sake of your ears. Seriously, I'm not great at pronouncing ye olde English. For this was on St. Valentine's Day, when every bird comes there to choose his match, of every kind that men may think of, and that so huge a noise they began to make, that earth and air and tree and every lake was so full that not easily was there space for me to stand, so full was all the place. Sometime between that 14th century poem and 2021, Valentine's Day has become a commercial blockbuster. Yeah, I just casually skipped over about 700 years, don't worry about it. Today, Americans send 145 million Valentine's Day cards every year and spend billions on candy, flowers, jewelry, and date nights. And people celebrate Valentine's Day in many different ways all around the world. Time for some fun facts. Teachers receive the most Valentine's Day cards, followed by children, mothers, and wives. And the top five spots are rounded out by pets. (laughs) What? Pets? I mean, sure, every day is a great day to spoil your pet and give them a treat, because who's a good boy? But a valentine? 
yeah, I'm sure cats and dogs and hamsters are really into Valentine's Day and totally know what's going on. <laughs> Juliet still gets love letters. Verona, Italy, the setting of Shakespeare's famed Romeo and Juliet, receives about a thousand letters addressed to Juliet every year. That bitch. I've never gotten a thousand letters and I'm not even dead yet. Frederick Douglass didn't know the exact date of his own birth, but he chose to celebrate it on February 14th. As many as six million couples get engaged each Valentine's Day. According to the condom company Durex, condom sales are highest around Valentine's Day, 20 to 30% higher than usual. And penicillin, the mold byproduct and popular treatment for venereal diseases, first debuted on February 14th, 1929. Gotta be careful out there, kids. The idea of Cupid dates back to 700 BC, and the Greek god of love named Eros, who was actually an immortal man who could make people and gods fall in love, causing all sorts of mayhem. In Sophocles' Antigone, Eros, invincible in battle, Eros, who falls upon men's property, you who spend the night upon the soft cheeks of a girl and travel over the sea and through the huts of dwellers in the wild, None among the immortals can escape you, nor any among mortal men, and he who has you is mad. In Euripides' Hippolytus, I pray that love may never come to me with murderous intent in rhythms measureless and wild. In the 4th century BCE, the Romans adapted Eros into the little cherub with a bow and arrow. It had something to do with infantilizing Eros because they thought he was under the control of his mother, Aphrodite. If you find the baby diaper version of Cupid disturbing, just don't worry about it. The Romans were creepy as hell. By the 19th century, Cupid was linked to Valentine's Day because of his love matching powers. Giving red roses for romance dates back to the late 17th century, when King Charles II of Sweden learned the language of flowers on a trip to Persia and brought the tradition back to Europe where it became popular during the Victorian era. Richard Cadbury introduced the first heart-shaped box of chocolates for Valentine's Day in 1861. And conversation hearts, those chalky little candy hearts that say things like be mine and hug me, came out in 1866. A guy that invented a machine to make medicinal lozenges diversified and added candy making to his repertoire, resulting in the Neko sweethearts. Although back then they were bigger and had longer phrases on them, such as married in white, you have chosen right. And how long shall I have to wait? Please be considerate. <laughs> Hallmark started producing Valentines in 1916. In Japan, women usually give gifts to men for Valentine's Day, but the guys return the favor on White Day, March 14th. On February 14th, Finland celebrates something I won't even try to pronounce, but it means Friends Day. Gifts and cards are given and received by friends. In Estonia, singles can take a ride on the love bus in the hope of meeting someone special. Sounds like fun. Side note, does anyone else remember the hilariously horrible reality show from like 15 years ago called The Fifth Wheel? <laughs> Oh, man. In Slovenia, February 14th is considered a great day to work in the fields. Uh, no thanks. But they do have another romantic holiday in March called St. Gregory's Day. Who the heck is St. Gregory? I have no idea, but apparently the various St. Valentines didn't have the market cornered. In Iraq, conservative Muslims view the day as a Western holiday, but that doesn't stop it from being wildly popular with some of the rest of the population, 
who celebrate with cards, roses, teddy bears, and all the rest. Many other countries around the world celebrate a version of Valentine's Day, but a few governments ban it. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Belgorod province in Russia, Malaysia, and Indonesia, for example. So I think we can say that while Valentine's Day itself may be a bit cliche and doesn't fully represent the utopia of love, it's still pretty fun to celebrate. And maybe it has a few cultish characteristics, because it's really hard to quit. Really. Who wants to be that guy who's like, you know, I don't really feel like celebrating Valentine's Day. I think I'll skip it. <laughs> yeah, guess you're sleeping on the couch tonight, buddy. Maybe that's why a lot of men see Valentine's Day as sort of extortionary. <laughs> Now, I'm hoping that the sudden fervor for poetry that Amanda Gorman's inauguration performance stirred up is still kicking around because I'm about to read you some poetry, which might be painful. I'm starting with the world's first recognized valentine, written by Charles, Duke of Orléans, in prison. Charles was caught up in a French royal family civil war and eventually thrown into prison in the Tower of London. He wrote this poem to his wife from prison in 1415. My very gentle Valentine, since for me you were born too soon and I for you was born too late, God forgives him who has estranged me from you for the whole year. I am already sick of love, my very gentle Valentine. I guess it should be noted that the wife to whom he wrote was 11 years old when they married, and he was 15. At that time, of course, royal marriages were considered affairs of state, not affairs of the heart. Charles himself had been married off at the age of 12 to his first wife, who was his 17-year-old cousin. She was already a widow by then, having been married for the first time at age 6. She died in childbirth, and Charles then married for the second time in another political union. Charles spent 25 years in prison. By the time he got out and returned to France at age 46, the wife he'd written that valentine to from prison had died. He married again, this time to a 14-year-old. Yeah, yuck. Let's bring forward in time a few hundred years. This is Love's Philosophy by Percy Bysshe Shelley. Yeah, Mary Shelley's husband. 1819. The fountains mingle with the river and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single. All things by a law divine in one spirit meet and mingle. Why not I with thine? See the mountains kiss high heaven and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgiven if it disdained its brother and the sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What is all this sweet work worth, if thou kiss not me? She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron, 1814 She walks in beauty like the night, of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright, meet in her aspect and her eyes, thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. One shade the more, one ray the less, had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven tress, or softly lightens o'er her face, where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear their dwelling place and on that cheek and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent. The smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days in goodness spent, 
a mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. Here's one for those of you who have been in a relationship for a long time. (laughs) Another Valentine by Wendy Cope, 2011. Today, we are obliged to be romantic and think of yet another Valentine. We know the rules and we are both pedantic. Today is the day we have to be romantic. Our love is old and sure, not new and frantic. You know I'm yours, and I know you are mine. And saying that has made me feel romantic. My dearest love, my darling Valentine. And here's one for the cynics, or just with a sense of humor. Unfortunate Coincidence by Dorothy Parker, 1926. By the time you swear you're his, shivering and sighing, and he vows his passion is infinite, undying, lady, make a note of this, one of you is lying. (laughs) Ouch! And just in case this Valentine's Day doesn't go your way, here's Michael Drayton, apparently at the end of a relationship. Since there's no help, 1594. Since there's no help, come, let us kiss and part. Nay, I have done, you get no more of me. And I am glad, yea, glad with all my heart, that thus so cleanly I myself can free. Shake hands forever, cancel all our vows. And when we meet at any time again, be it not seen in either of our brows that we one jot of former love retain. Now, at the last gasp of love's latest breath, when his pulse failing, passion speechless lies, when faith is kneeling by his bed of death, and innocence is closing up his eyes, now, if thou wouldst, when all have given him over, from death to life, thou mightst him yet recover. And finally, we all know roses are red, violets are blue, but the original is even better. From the collection of English nursery rhymes, Gammer Girton's Garland, 1784. The rose is red, the violet's blue, the honey's sweet, and so are you. Thou art my love, and I am thine. I drew thee to my valentine. The lot was cast, and then I drew, and fortune said it should be you. Thanks for listening, and happy Valentine's Day!